Kim, what's on your radar? More and more people are announcing they're leaving the state of California and other blue states in favor of red states with fewer regulations and less COVID restrictions. Earlier this month, Elon Musk confirmed in a securities and exchange filing that he had officially moved Tesla's headquarters from Palo Alto, California to just outside of Austin, Texas. Famous chef Gordon Ramsay has moved his restaurant headquarters to Dallas, Texas from the Golden State. Disney is relocating 2,000 of its employees out of California to Florida. And yesterday, YouTuber and Locals Platform founder Dave Rubin announced he's moving himself and his entire staff to Florida. And it isn't just businesses and wealthy people fleeing the state. According to a 2020 study done by U-Haul, where they looked at the net gains and losses of one-way truck rentals, the company found people were moving in droves to Tennessee, Texas, and Florida while fleeing California, Illinois, and New Jersey. And even if people don't leave their blue states entirely, migration trends are showing people are ditching the bluest areas of the states for purple and red areas instead. For example, here in California, more and more people are fleeing Los Angeles and San Francisco in favor of counties with lower costs of living and fewer COVID restrictions. If Democrats are so great at running things, why are people fed up and moving to red areas? Well, the New York Times dove into this question a month ago in a video titled, Liberal Hypocrisy is Fueling American Inequality, Here's How. In the piece, the Times dissects the three areas most likely cited by people as the reason they move, housing costs, taxes, and education. So it's no secret that housing costs in cities such as San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York are outrageously high. The median home price in San Francisco is just over one and a half million dollars. In LA, it's 925,000. And in New York, it's 785,000. And these prices include areas for working class blue collar workers. How can anyone afford this? Now, the Times piece shows us why they can't. Despite Democrats claiming they believe in that housing is an equal right, when plans to build low cost housing in their neighborhoods arise, they advocate and vote against it. They show up to marches, they say everyone is equal, but they don't want these people in their neighborhoods. The same thing is seen with taxes. The Times showed how states like Washington, which prides itself on being extremely progressive, actually has the least progressive taxation system in the entire country. In fact, even Texas is more progressive than Washington. This doesn't apply to states like California, New York as much, but what people don't understand is in Los Angeles, where I live, for example, we wonder why we have high taxes, yet the homeless line the streets. We read in the paper about a local community college priding itself on opening up its parking lot at night for homeless students who need to sleep in their cars. What in the world? Where are our tax dollars going? Education disparity is also the most apparent in these large liberal cities. Everyone knows property taxes fund the education system. This means kids in wealthy areas get better funded schools while kids in poor neighborhoods are studying in dilapidated buildings with few resources. You would think that in Democrat controlled cities, the taxes would be collected, put into one pot and evenly distributed, but that hasn't happened despite Democrats continuing to run on equal rights and resources for all. What we're talking about here is that blue states are the problem. Blue states are where the housing crisis is located. Blue states are where the disparities in education funding are the most dramatic. Blue states are the places where tens of thousands of homeless people are living on the streets. Blue states are the places where economic inequality is increasing most quickly in this country. This is not a problem of of not doing well enough. It is It is a situation where the blue states are the problem. Affluent liberals tend to be really good at showing up to the marches and talking about how they love equality. They're really good at putting signs in their lawn saying that all are welcome here. But by their actions, what they're actually saying is, yes, we believe in these ideals, just not in my backyard. We are denying people the opportunity to prosper and to thrive and to build better lives. And it is happening in places where Democrats control the levers of policy. Now, this is just one part of the problem. Yes, people are fed up with high taxes, outrageous cost of living and homelessness expanding on the streets. But that's only part of what's now driving the mass exodus of left UGs to red states. The pandemic has been another driving factor. Once again, in another showcasing of hypocrisy, Democrats screamed for four years that Donald Trump was a fascist dictator who would strong arm us into living under his authoritarian rule. And yet the states with the most COVID restrictions controlling people's every movement and everyday lives are run by Democrats. Democrats have implemented the harshest, most authoritarian restrictions on freedom of movement, freedom to participate in society, freedom to have an education, freedom to run a business and more. People are moving to Republican-run states to be allowed to 
eat in restaurants, run their businesses, and educate their children in classrooms. The exact opposite of a life under an authoritarian fascist. I just want to end this by showing you this video that showcases the complete lack of self-awareness of Democrats. Remove Ron, a Democratic PAC raising funds to help whichever Democrat runs against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, released an ad a couple of months ago that portrays DeSantis as a villain in a suspense film. Now, DeSantis is calling for freedom from vaccine mandates, shutdowns, and mask wearing, yet he's the bad guy. Never in the history of any movie has the baddie been the one promising he's going to subjugate everyone by giving them freedom. So much freedom, people are flocking to his state. Here's the ad. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of your cabin crew, we'd like to inform you that we have officially entered Florida airspace. Now that we're making our final descent, Please watch this short message from Governor Ron DeSantis on COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of your cabin crew, we'd like to inform you that we have officially entered Florida airspace. Now that we're making our final descent, please watch this short message from Governor Ron DeSantis on COVID-19. Thereafter, everyone on board will be required to comply with the state's forever purge. We are not doing any vaccine passports in the state of Florida. We trust people to make their own decisions in this state. We are not going to be bludgeoning people with restrictions and mandates and lockdowns or any of that stuff. As Governor DeSantis stated, while you're within state lines, you do not have to wear a mask. You do not have to get a vaccine. It is against the law for private businesses or schools to mandate masks or vaccines. And you have the absolute right to infect whoever you want, whenever and wherever, with COVID-19. Thank you for traveling with us, and please, enjoy your forever purge. COVID-19 is surging again. This is the time to double down. The governor is doubling down. He says students shouldn't be forced to wear masks. If you are trying to lock people down, I'm going to stand in your way. Florida just requested 300 new ventilators. Hospitals are filling up here. There is evidence that children are making up much higher cases that are emerging. The numbers continue to rise across Florida. This fall, don't breathe. This is insane. The Forever Purge. Coming to a theater and live streaming networks near you. That ad actually had such an opposite effect. People accused Ron DeSantis of writing it himself and releasing it like he must have been behind this because Plausible. what villain says, give me freedom, give me freedom. Yeah, they're, like, uh, it, it dysto- they're making it sound it would be dystopian to not force little kids to wear masks. It's dystopian to force little kids to wear masks. Right. Like the opposite of much of what they're saying. I don't agree with every single po- policy Ron DeSantis has made. I don't see why the government needs to like forbid pri- private entities from doing vaccine mandates. Um, Right, that's one criticism, and there's plenty of other criticisms you can make of his handling, and you can point to the numbers of people who've died in his state. There's plenty of criticisms you can make, but good Lord, what was that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, and my point is, is that look, uh, democratic cities, democratic governance has taken the wrong turn, and a lot of people are now leaving because of it. So if Democrats want to win elections, if Democrats want to remain in power or even remain relevant, Democrats need to have some serious self-reflection and understand that these policies that are being implemented in these heavily blue run areas, I live in an area that is entirely run by Democrats. There are no Republicans running anything where I live. And the you know, people are fleeing. People are fleeing. People are fleeing for for places like Florida. They need to have some self-reflection and really think about what policies do people want and what do people need moving forward? Otherwise, people will just continue to flock out of these areas and run off to red states. Although uh, I, wish them, the, you know, I wish them luck because look where they're going. Miami, which is mostly Democratic run. Austin, which is you know, about as liberal as you're going to get. When, when they flee to right. Montana, they flee to Bozeman, which is a Democratic bastion inside Montana. So yeah, I Elon, mean, that's kind Elon of the Musk, rub, going, right? Elon Musk yes, he's leaving California, but he's going to Austin. 
And yes, Austin is in Texas, but Austin is still Austin. Uh, Austin is, but I will say that, you know, as I moved to Los Angeles from Austin and I lived there for many years, it, even though Austin is blue, it is nothing like what is right. what California is. You know, their idea of Democrat and liberal in Texas, just like Boise, Idaho, where I'm from, which is a blue area, Idaho's definition and Texas's definition is not nearly as liberal as California's definition of a liberal. I feel like I got out of California. Just, yeah, I was, you know, visiting uh, L.A. I saw you in person last week. Yeah. Uh, I got out just in time before they, I don't know, before they wouldn't let me leave and they forced me to wear a mask or something. You would have had to wear a mask in my studio, Robbie. Well, we would not have complied. <laughs> and even, like, and yes, and there's too many people in New Jersey anyway. Uh, and it's good, <laughs> it's good people are leaving New Jersey. The population of New Jersey is still growing, even with people leaving it. The population of California only came down by a couple hundred thousand, even with million, you know, million plus people leaving. Uh, so, you know, there could be other interesting kind of knock on political yeah. effects of all of these liberals. And you're seeing that in Texas, actually, like the right. re one reason right. you had so many Democrats elected in 2018 in those elections in Texas 2020 was because so many people moved from out of state to Texas and then kept voting Democratic. So uh, some but of these again, states Democrat should be careful what they wish for. Yeah, but again, a Democrat in Texas or a Democrat in Idaho, when you look at their policies and what they stand for, are not the same usually as Democrats in California and the policy platforms that they support. They're, you know, they they run under the same name, but they're totally and completely different in many, many yeah. ways. I mean, a Democrat in Idaho would often be considered Republican in California. So it kind of, you know, that's because Republicans in red states are very, very red compared to Republicans yeah. in California. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of that. But there is the rub of that. We, you know, they're moving and then they change. And then the people that live in those areas get upset. My family in Idaho likes it. They're, they've always been Democrats. So they're like, finally, more of us, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, other other people are like, get out of here. Get those Californians. Send them back home. I got to leave it there. Thank you, Kim. We'll have more rising right after this.